Again, um, today I want to kind of round out a little bit of the discussions on the Con 6M by talking about one of the biggest parts of its design. We've talked about the micro tuner, we've talked about the spatula keys a little bit, and its articulated G sharp mechanism, inching into that. Um, but there's one last big feature that came with the 1933 patent of the you know the 6M, and that is the work to the alternate G-sharp key. Now, the alternate G-sharp key was previously known as, and still is called, a G-sharp trill key today. Um, and its original function, it would work against the, the spatula-designed key um, for the same note. So the best way to describe that is we have this extra key lever here in between F and E on the right-hand stack. And Originally, the, the, the key would work against the spring of the G-sharp on the spatula. And previously, as it was an unarticulated cluster, um, the, the notes would not work in conjunction with themselves, so you had a single G-sharp key, and that was played by your left pinky. And if you wanted to do a G-sharp trill to, to G or G-sharp, you would have to hold down this you know left-hand pinky option, and then you would play this key against it, da 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 um, to get a G to G sharp sound like this. <laughs> giving its name the G sharp trill. Uh, but as part of the reworked mechanism with the additions to the articulated mechanism in the spatula cluster and the G sharp linkage, Alan Loomis added an extra hinge sleeve to the alternate G sharp key to activate it alongside with the spatula table. So starting in 1934 as well, in the production model year, you have a fully standalone alternate G-sharp key, or alternate A-flat, depending on your key signatures and then harmonics, um, which can be fully operated by the right hand. Now this does a couple of things, which is really exciting. Um, it makes you know, an extra standalone key option on the saxophone, and it expands the intervallic nature of the lower half of the horn. Um, you know, on a traditional saxophone, uh, one that doesn't have the alternate G-sharp key, as those are no longer in current production, um, the, the, the right hand and the left hand have kind of this dividing line right in the middle of the saxophone. You know, it starts at the left hand, lowest note is G, highest note is F, um, but then when added with the right hand, the lowest note is B-flat on the instrument, or low A, depending on your setup. But the right hand can only go to an F sharp at its highest. I mean, really, F is kind of the highest um, in finger placement terms. And you can do F sharp by means of alternate fingerings or the middle finger in the right hand. But having an alternate G sharp allows you to go one step further in your, your, your use of what this hand can do which means that it's one step away from being able to play all of the different notes on the saxophone. Um, that'll be a topic for another video. <laughs> so I wanna demonstrate a little bit of the alternate G sharp and its, its usage, um, or A flat, depending on how you think of it. Uh, chromatically, it's, it's fully incorporable into the rest of the instrument. So you know, that gives you a half step of G to A flat, or G to G sharp, or G sharp to A. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of things, and I'm gonna really just try and utilize this alternate G sharp key. And we'll see where the conversation continues from there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
of the alternate A flat in this case, um, I'm expanding the, the majority of my work to the right hand and using this kind of feel of you know, the tactile combinations of where each of my notes are and the, the opposite of that. So my pinky now has E flat or C. Um, F sharp can be in two places. It has this, but then also I can use my index or middle finger to give a new pivot point at A-flat. Um, I really like using the alternate key because it expands the nature of what we can do on the saxophone. Um, you know, if we want to think in more sharps rather than flats, we can pull this around and I can play something kind of in the in the A, A range. And let's, let's try that now. Um, but it's important to experiment with the way that your fingers move in combination. So if you do index finger on the alternate G sharp, um, that might make you know a, a step to a different note more difficult than if you do the middle finger on the alternate G sharp key. And you know there, there's kind of an example for that F sharp major being a little bit tricky, but it's still navigable. Um, so I'm gonna play around, and we're gonna think of this as G sharp more than A flat this time and and see what comes in the discussion. on this thing at this point. Um, now, there was a passage in there where I did kind of an A, A7, like an, like an A dominant arpeggio, right? And this would be... Rather than making that, this uh, the G sharp happen by this, this left pinky, right? happen all in the right hand and that means that G is just open right rather than G is closed plus and gives you this other you know inverse way of thinking about it and you know I encourage everyone if you have this alternate G sharp key um, later horns uh, kind of mid 1930s and on on um, the alternate G sharp will start to move in this direction rather than it being just a, a trill against the, the spatula G-sharp, um, you have this extra key, and there's a lot you can do with it, and there's a lot that's still yet to be explored with it. Um, and I hope that you find a comfortable way to bring it into your playing, because it's a really, really cool part of your new chromatic approach to the instrument. Um, let's just play a little bit more, and you know, think Think, think about this in your, in your own playing and how this could potentially change the way you see, you know, passages or lines in major or minor keys. It gives you this other, you know, it, it's a lower feel of a G sharp. Um, you know, you can think of the, the famous Creston Sonata line that you have at the very beginning. You just use a stronger finger rather than a potentially weaker one in the pinky that has to do less work now by just quickly moving in between your alternate keys. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini presentation on the alternate G-sharp key, and I'm sure there'll be more uh, fun things coming soon. And please take a, take a look at some other videos, and thanks again for being here. Subscribe if you have the time. It makes the channel grow. And as always, it was 
great to play for you, and we'll do some more of this soon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 